Hi there students, it's Mr. Pouts and this is a lesson for section 210 and the idea of, or the theme for this lesson is change expressed as a percent. So we're using percents again but we're talking about different change, how a change in something expressed as a percent. So our goal that you should write down, we have two of them. Um, we're going to mainly focus on the first one but we're going to also do some of the second one so please write them both down because this is our focus. Your goal is to, be, to find percent change. Let me find out what that is. And then to find the relative error, error in linear and nonlinear measurements. So to find relative error is the other part. Percent change and relative error. All right. <clears throat> so here we've, got, here we've got some key vocabulary terms for this section that you'll need to know. The first one there is percent change, which is you know, one of the things that we're trying to learn today. Percent change is an amount of change expressed as a percent of the original. So the amount of change expressed as a percent of the original. So if you say um, something is 25% off, if you see something at the, at the store that says 25% off, that's 25% off the original. So the change would be minus 25%. Okay? Now that would be a percent decrease. A new amount that is less than the original. Okay? So I know I'm jumping around here, but a percent decrease would be like a 20%, 25% off. That would be um, a percent decrease because you're decreasing what the actual amount is by taking 20% off of it. A percent increase would be in, if you were increasing the amount of something. So it's a new amount that is greater than the original. Greater by a certain percent. Alright, and then lastly, relative error is our last part. Relative error is the ratio of the absolute value of the difference between an estimated value and an actual value. So it's the ratio of the difference between an estimated value and the actual value um, but it's always going to be positive. That's why it says absolute value there. Um, and that's compared to the actual value. And you'll see what that is better when we do an example or two. All right. So percent change. This is the first part. The first goal is dealing with percent change. So if we look at this through, it says percent change is the ratio of the amount of change to the original amount. <clears throat> So percent change, or P percent, equals the amount of increase or decrease over the original. So if you, to find the amount of increase, you subtract from the original to find the, or the original from that. To see the amount of decrease, you take the original minus the new amount. So it's how much different it is from the um, original. So here's an example. Problem one, it says a coat is on sale. The original price is $82. The sale price is $74.50. What is the discount expressed as a percent? Well, we said percent change is the amount of increase or decrease divided by the original. So we'll, so we'll put per, uh, percent change equals, so the original is 82 on the bottom. And the amount of increase or decrease, so to figure out the amount of increase or decrease, so that would just be the, the original minus 74.50. So that will tell you how much it changed. That is the change there. So 82 minus 74.50, I think that's 750 over 82. And then you just check, check on your calculator. Our handy-dandy calculator will tell us what 750 divided by 82 and that'll get you about 0 uh, what was it 0 0.91 we'll say it's a 0 point or 0 9 1 but this is all we need right here because well it's 1 so we're just going to round it to this right here now it's 0 0.091 and remember if it's 0 0.091 we want it out of 100. That's out of 1 right now. So out of 100, you move the decimal two places to the right. 
or that's multiplying it by 100. Because 0 0.09 is the same thing as 9 out of 100, or 9.1 out of 100 there. So that would be 9.1%. So, and you also have to tell if it's an increase or decrease. So it's a 9.1% decrease from the original. All right. Let's do another example uh, just so we can get familiar with that again. Um, we're going to find the percent change again. It says the store buys an electric guitar for $295. The store then marks up the price of the guitar, guitar to $340. So I don't know if you knew that, but stores get things and they um, jack up the price so they make money off of it. Um, that's just how the world works. But the original was 295 so that goes on the top or sorry on the bottom we're going to figure out what the markup what the change percent changes so we're going to take the what it changed the change would be 340 minus 295 so i'll tell you how much it changed so that's going to be 45 it changed 45 dollars over 295 and if we get that whoops 45 Divided by 295 gets us point zero or sorry point one five two five. Well, it, we'll run it to point one five three. And again, that's out of one point one five three out of one. We want to make it out of 100, so we multiply it by 100 to make it a percent, which then moves the decimal two places. So it's going to be zero, well, nope, nope, nope. It's going to be 15.3%. Oh, and is that an increase or a decrease? It says it went up in price, so it's a 15.1% or 0.3% increase in price. So that's how you find the percent increase or decrease. That formula right there, um, very simple to use, um, very easy to use, and you can tell how much something either went up or down in price, or if we're doing a different type of thing, might not always be dealing with price. Um, Salamander! Anyway, now we're going to do relative error. And the second goal deal with, dealt with finding relative error. So let's just read this through before we look at this thing. It says relative area, error, like we said before, is the ratio of the absolute value of the difference of a measured or estimated value and an actual value compared to the actual value. So that's just a long wordy thing. Basically, let's look at this formula. Relative error is the measured or estimated value minus the actual value. So whatever you usually whatever you estimate, we're, we're finding relative error based on something you estimate. And going, thinking the estimated minus the actual, and all dividing it by the actual. So when it's when we put it into a percent, it's also called percent error. So in case you wanted to know that, but we're going to find this relative error as a decimal or as a percent. So it says, I'm giving you multiple choice here, but it says a decorator estimates that a rectangle rectangular rug is five feet by eight feet. The rug is actually four feet by eight feet. What is the percent error in the estimated area? So we estimated that it would be 5 by 8. So that's 5 times 8, the area, you do the length times the width, 5 times 8 would be 40 feet squared. Um, the actual It says it's a 4 by 8, which would be 32 feet squared. Now, the formula tells us that we're going to do the relative area error is the absolute value, so it's just really going to make it a positive, of the estimated minus the actual. So the estimated was 40. The actual is 32. 
We're going to divide that by the actual, which is 32. So the absolute value of 40 minus 32, that's going to be the absolute value of, value of 8, which is just 8. Because remember, the absolute value is just how far away from 0 it is. And 8 is 8 numbers away from 0. So it's just a positive 8. Basically, it's always the positive number um, that would go along with it. So 8 divided by 32, um, you can check. Oops, I think it's going to be 0.25, but let's check. 8 divided by 32 is 0.25. And hopefully you recognize that to change that to a percent, you you just multiply it by 100. And 0.25 as a percent is 25%. So the error was actually 25%. That means um, the decorator estimated, the decorator's estimate was 25% above what the actual one was, what the actual um, area of the, of the rug was. All right, maybe not the best estimation, but could have been worse, certainly. <clears throat> All right, we have one final problem that I'd like to go through. And this one might take a couple steps, but let's just read it through. It says, the, the diagram at the right shows the dimensions of a gift box to the nearest inch. What is the greatest possible percent error in calculating the volume of the gift box? So... So let's let's first find the actual volume. And to find volume of a rectangular prism like this or a box, you do length times width times height. So we're going to do the actual first. So volume equals length times width times height, or or base times width times height would be another way to do it. Um, and that would be equal to five times six times 12, which would equal 5 times 6 times 12, 360, 360 um, inches cubed. Now, let's find the minimum error. Now, remember, this says, according to this problem, this is a tricky one, but that's why I wanted to go through it. This problem says it was rounded to the nearest inch. So it could have all, all like five inches could have been rounded up from 4.5. So it could have been 4.5. This one also could have been 5.5. This one could have been 11.5. Because really, those could all be rounded up. So then let's let's try that. So the volume, if we did the minimum, would be 4.5 times 5.5 times 11.5, which our handy dandy calculator will tell us that 4.5 times 5.5 times 11.5 equals 284.65. All right, so definitely a lot smaller than what's the actual of 360. Now, the same thing could be said about this surrounding the opposite way. So this could have been 5.5, rounded down to 5. This could have been 6.5. This could have been 12.5. Anything greater than that, it for sure would have been rounded up to, to the higher one. So if we do the max, maybe we do volume is equal to the 5.5 times 6.5 times 12.5, which certainly will get us a bigger number, 5.5 um, times 6.5 times 12 and a half, whoops, gets 446.875, wow.
Now, even if you didn't get that far, now figuring that out, we can find the percent error, which is right here, or the relative error. We just take the estimated minus the actual all over the actual. So if we do it with a minimum, we're still going to do it over the actual, which, oops, which is 360. Only we're going to take the 284.625 minus the 360. But it's going to be positive because we're going to make we take the absolute value of that. Same thing over here with the max, we do the 446.875 minus the actual, which is 360, all over the actual, which is 360. All right. Now if I do that, so let's see. Really, you're doing 360 minus 4. 360 minus 284.625. The reason why I switched it around is because that will make it positive. But then I divide that by 360, and it's 0 0.209, I think it was. All right. Sorry, I was just checking something. All right, then we do the same thing over here. So that would be 20.9%. Let's see if this one's any bigger. Let's do 446.875 divided by, or, sorry, minus 360 and divide that by 360, and we get 24, 0 0.241, which is about 24.1%. That one's bigger. So taking the maximum, that is actually the greatest possible percent error if we're rounding for this one. All right. I know that was a very long multi-step problem to try to figure out. Um, there's something worth worth noting of how you can use this relative error idea, all right? But I do want you to for sure understand that uh, this this formula is how you find relative error. All right. Anyway, um, last thing, don't don't forget to take a, a minute now to self-assess and answer your questions on the goal sheet. Please do so now. Don't wait till the end of the chapter to do it. All right. And that's the last thing I have for you. Enjoy the rest of your day.